that's new for assemblies in 2010. The first new feature is the assembly visualization tool. This allows you to sort the assembly based on a certain property such as mass and have it graphically show which parts are the highest. In the table at the left hand side you're given both a graphical representation as well as a color. You can change the colors or add colors in between to change the spectrum. This allows you to easily see which parts are the highest in mass or cost or something like that. It is also possible to drag off the lower items on the list, removing them from the view and increasing your spectrum. For example, if you remove the heaviest item, the handlebars, you now have a better view of which items are heavier. You can also choose other properties, such as density or total weight, which includes all the instances of a certain part. For example, there are two of the grips, and so their masses are added together. At the top left, you have the option to show assemblies or bottom level parts, and you have the option to turn off the value bars. The little icons give you a little bit of feedback, so items with two or more have two part symbols, whereas other items just have one. And if you're to hide one of the items in a multiple, it now shows with a little hidden part. In the past release, we saw the addition of virtual parts. In 2010, this has gone one step further with the ability to convert a part into a virtual part. In this assembly we have an o-ring which is actually another part. However, it doesn't fit with the assembly since it would need to be stretched to fit into the slot. In order to change the shape of this o-ring without affecting the original part, we were going to have to make it into a virtual component which will bring it inside of the assembly and allow changes to be made. And it breaks the link to the original part so that the original will not be affected. So now we can make some changes to the shape of the o-ring by changing the sweep sketch. We'll delete the original circular sketch and then create an offset based on the groove. Now, of course, the profile doesn't intersect the groove any longer, so we're going to have to make a change there as well. Once the profile and the path have been recreated, the part will rebuild. As you can see, we now have our O-ring stretched the way we want it to be. However, if we go back into the drawing for the O-ring, we can see that the original remains untouched. Now if we have similar parts that also might require the altered O-ring, it is also possible to copy virtual components. Here we have another assembly with the same shape of groove. And the O-ring that we altered would fit perfectly. By going into the other assembly and dragging the virtual o-ring into the new assembly we can create a new virtual component which lives in the new assembly. Improvements have also been made to the replace components tool. In this example we we'll replace this smaller filter with one of the larger ones. After selecting the component you want to replace and what to replace it with SolidWorks will automatically choose mate references. However, sometimes it's not exactly correct. In 2010, you get a nice visual of the old part and what you need to create the new mates.
you can easily cycle through the mates, or you can isolate either the component, the component and the mating parts, or everything. After selecting a mate reference, you can then move on to the next. In this case, we need a flat face at the end of the part. After all the mate references have been selected, you can see the three check marks at the side and that the part is placed correctly. Now we'll take a look at some new type of mates, most specifically mates involving coordinate systems. First of all, it's now possible to create a mate reference from a coordinate system. The only choice is a coincident mate. However, you can choose to align the axis with other coordinate systems. It is also now possible to mate a coordinate system with the origin. This will make them coincident but will not lock the rotation in any direction. Lastly, it is now possible to use smart mates on a coordinate system. And when dragging a coordinate system onto another coordinate system, you will see the coordinate system mate icon pop up. And you can choose to align the axis, locking rotation and translation in all directions. Mirrored components are much easier to create in SOLIDWORKS 2010. The property manager has been rethought to make it easier to flow. You still select your mirror plane and then the components to mirror, but now there are arrows at the top to direct your workflow. Also new is the ability to select the orientation of a part. If we click on the brake lever assembly, we can choose one of four orientations. Most of the time, SOLIDWORKS will get the correct orientation for you, but sometimes you might like to make a change. It is also very easy to create the opposite hand version of the mirrored parts. SOLIDWORKS will automatically choose which parts out of an assembly will need to be mirrored and which ones can be kept with only one orientation. So here in the grip shift of this handlebars, we have a little bit of interference, since these need opposite hand versions. But we can quickly change the crank and the grip to make it all fit properly. The next step is to decide how you will create the mirrored versions, whether as derived configurations or as new files. The mirror components will now be created as its own feature in the feature manager tree. This way, when moving the one component, it will reflect on the mirrored side. Also changed for 2010 is the view mates command. By right clicking on this assembly and clicking view mates, you're given a list of the mates instead of the balloons that were in the past. By clicking on an individual mate, it will show you the items that are mated and the balloon. As well, items that lead directly to the ground from that part are shown with a little ground arrow. So you can easily tell which mates are holding that part in place and which ones are attaching other parts to it. 